Namaste all, hope you're doing well. Welcome to your practice. This evening's practice was your intermediate half of flow class. This class was meant to be half like an outdoor setting, but due to our ever changing weather, we are live on Facebook. Class will be resumed for our rescheduled rather for tomorrow evening. If you are joining me today or if you're going to be looking through this practice through the archives, I hope you have a good practice. Remember, always mindfully applying. No pressure, no force, feel free to play around, but always within your comfortable limits. For this practice, we will be focusing on the Kapalabhati, the intentional exhale and the passive inhale. Remembering if you have any issues with the back, whether through the lower back or the neck, if they're acute at the moment, this breath works best avoided. Likewise, any strain through the abdominal region, any issues with migraines as such at the present moment, it's best to avoid in this instance. If it feels good, mindfully apply within your comfort limits. A slower, steadier breath. Completely focused on the exhale. Allow the inhale to passively occur. Sit in whichever position is best for you, where you can maintain a lifted spine. Eyes closed and a mouth closed. And we'll take a moment just to arrive, create space. In an effort to really create space for your practice, take a moment to check in through the physical body. How does the physical body feel as you come to your practice? Similar inquiry into the condition of the mind. Are you feeling present? Is your mind elsewhere? Just notice. And with this attuned awareness, we'll softly bring our attention to the breath. And you can remain witnessing the breath, or return to it at any moment. But if all is well, mentally prepare for a few gentle rounds of Kapalabhati. That intention, exhale out through the nose, allow the inhale to be passive. Once you're ready, begin. Just notice, while trying to change or control the breath. As the breath begins to slowly return to normal. And you mentally prepare for the second round. Once you're ready, begin. Stop. Just notice what's the response. Perhaps with your natural retention of breath. Just observe that. The breath begins to slowly restart. Mentally preparing for the third and final round. Spine is lifted, keeping the head and neck steady. Once you're ready, begin. Stop. Again, return to witnessing. Perhaps in this instance, allow your awareness to rest the eyebrow center. And 
Namaskar and Mudra. If it's comfortable for you, perhaps lightly press in front of the chest. Taking a moment to set an intention or dedication for your practice. Releasing your hands, chin to chest, a few gentle blinks, opening of the eyes. Namaste. Softly releasing the hands. And once you feel steady, we'll softly come to standing. In whichever way is necessary for you, no rush as you come up. And we'll make our way towards the front of the mat. Come about a foot's distance or so from the front of the mat. Feet together, toes and heels to touch. Just take a moment to really ground yourself. Share the weight evenly in all directions. Stand into that. Now note that throughout the day you may have been standing a lot, but have you truly paid attention to how you're sharing the weight in your feet? Have you been sharing it evenly? Gaze straight ahead, the chin sets a little back, and if you haven't already done so, begin to extend your breath. Ujjayi breathing is very comfortable, layered upon the breath. Mentally prepare for a few rounds of the sun salutation. Breath to move it as best you can, but remembering no force. Breathe as much as you need to. A little practice, coordinate. Namaskar asana. Palms are lightly press in front of the chest. Inhale, exhale. Inhale smoothly, begin to raise the hands. Softly and steadily. Arms in line with the ears as best you can. A light bend in the knees, then tuck the pelvis a very gentle back lift. Your next exhale, palms to face front, bend in the knee, push the hip back a little, then work forward to the front of the hip line. Fold in front, hands either side of the feet, whether your fingertips are the palms and release the head. Your next inhale, the right leg back, quite a good distance, ground the right knee on top of the toes, gaze is front. Next exhale, tuck the right toes, lift the knee. The left foot to meet the right, into the Dwe Pada, the plank pose. Maintain the breath out as best you can, ground the knees, squeeze the elbows close, roll down. Thighs, belly, chest, forehead. Roll the shoulder lightly open, slightly tuck the hip up and back. Your next inhale, lift the head, gaze front. Shift front a little first and raise head and chest on top of the toes, Bhujangasana. Next exhale, tuck the toes, keep the distance between the hands and the feet. Bend the knees, push the bottom back, feet together, Buddhasana. Bend the knees as you need to, as you inhale, the right foot all the way front. Remembering a helping hand if you need to, the knee is over the ankle or before it. Ground the left knee and tuck the toes, gaze front. Next exhale, tuck the toes, no rush. Left knee, right feet together, falling deeply, hands still in the original position as when you fall in front. A good bend of the knee, arm in line with the ear as best you can, palm to face as you inhale. Feel them more, keep the length in the spine. Knees are bent as you tuck the pelvis, gentle back bend. Exhale, Tadasana. Namaskar Asana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Urdhva, extend the tall, bend the knee, slight back bend. Exhale, walk forward from the hip. Inhale, the left, good distance, ground the knee on top of the toe. Exhale, Dwe Pala, maintain the breath out, knees, elbows close, thighs, belly, chest, forehead. Rolling of the shoulder, hips slightly up and back. Next inhale, gaze front. Raise the Bhujangasana on top of the toes. Exhale, top the toes. Bend the knee, push the hip up and back. Bhujangasana. Bend the knees a little or any variation as required. Inhale, step the left foot front. Ground the right knee on top of the toes, gaze front. Exhale, top the right toes. Smoothly step in front, feet together, falling deeply, release the head. A good bend in the knee, arm and leg with the ear, inhale, feel a mark. Keep the knees bent as you tuck the pelvis, slight back bend. Exhale, Tadasana, Namaskar Asana. Inhale, exhale, inhale, Lord of extent, bend the knee, slight back bend. Exhale, walk forward from the hip. Inhale, the right leg, ground the knee, or top the toe. 
Exhale, Dwe Pada. Maintain the breath up. Sashtangasana. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Bhujangasana. Inhale, right. All the way there, no rush. Brown left like knee or top toe. Exhale, falling deeply. Inhale, Lord. Exhale, Tarasana. Namaskarasana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Inhale, exhale, way far, maintain the breath. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Asana. Feet shoulder distance are wider, toes pointing straight ahead, hands on the hips, knees a little soft as you need to take it in hail. As you exhale, smooth your work forward from the hip. But my friend, not leading with the chest. Keep the ribs back, the whole of the torso works front together, hinging from the hip line to the depth that's appropriate for you. Feels good, release the hands, grab the big toes, middle finger, next and thumb, inhale, lift and lengthen, gaze slightly front. Exhale, fold deeply, work from the hip. Not using the strength of the shoulders to fold front, the fold comes from at the hip line, engaging through the base of the pelvic below the navel. Shoulder blades are drawing up the back now, so shoulders drop towards the hip, create space around the neck. Breathe. Beautiful. Next inhale, lift the head, slightly lift the chest, gaze a little front. As you exhale, release the hands. Hands come in front of the feet and edge your feet together. Toes and heels as best you can. Putting in a little bit of the knee, mild in the knee if you're not already there, but encouraging the knee to be over the ankle so can you lean back to achieve this. If this is successful, perhaps you lean back a little further as if you're seeking a deeper chair and then bend the knees a little further. But keep the knee over the ankle as best you can. This is good here, hands come to the hips. Start on the strong back, then begin to raise the torso up with minimal disturbance to the lower limbs as best you can. You can be as high as necessary and bend the knees. You can reduce the bend of the knees rather as much as you need to. So it feels good however you maintain it here and you include extending the arms in line with the ear. Palms to press. Ribs are back. Breathe really well. Slow and steady can you work. Your next inhale, really extend it, lengthen it all, take the bend out of your knees. The shoulder blades work on the back, sternum is back. If this becomes fatiguing at any moment, you can release the hands. Feels good, you're here. Your next exhale, fold to your right from your waist. Smoothly feel and work. The intention is a straight line across the front of the hips, straight line across the front of the shoulders, and the ribs are back. Mindful you're not pushing your hips front and pushing your knees front, often we do so when we fold. Keep the hip back, the knee back, so hip, knee and ankle still in a line. Feel and breathe. Beautiful opening on the left side of the body. Inhale, smoothly up. Ribs are back. Exhale to your left. Think falling from the waist. Mind you're not dropping your head, or if your arms are still up, they're not leaving your head resting the left arm. Keep the head active 
Allow it to smoothly move and stay centered as you fold. Superb, inhale smoothly back, really lengthen, sternum back. You can bring the hands to the hips at any moment, feels good, however, focusing your point, bend the right knee, lift your heels, feel the weight switch to your left foot. This is good, raise the right foot a little and raise the thigh from there as high as you can. Point to note that you're not leaning back away from the leg, that you're not rounding through the spine and attempt to raise the thigh higher. If this is occurring, lower the leg, lengthen the spine more. Complete focus on your point, feel that even weight throughout the entire left foot. Beautiful. Next exhale. If you have the space, you can release your turn your palms onto the side, then release your arms to shoulder height. If space is limited, maybe they're done by the sides of the body. And this is good. Continue with an exhale to fold front. Hinge from the hip, you're welcome to extend the right leg behind you, keep the foot up if necessary, you can ground the foot, build your practice here, all is well, little by little, you work from the hip, the intention is bringing the torso towards parallel, the hips are squaring, straight line across the back of the hip, and that right leg works towards parallel also, chin in a mile, double chin, arms on the side, space in the thighs, or out to the sides of the body, if you have the space, breathe really well. Beautiful reaction. Outside edge of the left hip. Perhaps even reaction around the arch of the feet and the heel. Putting a little bit on the left knee. As you inhale, for an extra challenge, keep the right foot up off the mat. Bring the right thigh back through and raise it towards a comfort point for you. Still good. Left hand, oh, set out of the right thigh. The right hand can be on the right hip. Very comfortably, you can extend the right arm behind. Focusing on the point is to get a little twisted to your right. inhale, bring the right hand back if it's gone around first, then followed by the gaze, coming back through the chest, extend both arms up as best you can in line with the ears, palms to press, and as you exhale, release the right foot to meet the left, the feet together, the spine is lifted, the ribs are back in down, feels good, build your practice, bend the left knee, lift the heel, just feel the weight switch to your right foot initially, focus on your point, be here or return to this point, feels good, little practice, Proceed to raise the left thigh up. Think more engagement below the navel. Center of gravity, whole of the body becoming engaged. Keeping the rib cage steady and the upper body steady for more by keeping the ribs held back and down. Real long and steady breath. Next exhale, keep the space, palms to face out, release your arms to shoulder height, or if necessary, down by the sides of the body, palms facing the thighs. Continue to fold front, extending the left leg behind now. You can touch the toes to the ground and be here and fold front to a degree as best for you. A little practice, the left leg is up. Further practice, you can begin to work a little deeper from the front edge of the right hip. Bring your torso towards parallel. Bring the left leg towards parallel. There's no fight for death. Recognize the reaction on the right knee. Breathe. Beautiful. 
put a bend, light bend in the right knee if you haven't done so. As you inhale, bring the left leg back, extra challenge, key the left foot up off the mat. Left hand outside of the left hip, the right hand is outside of the thigh, lift the spine. No fight, just play. This is good, extend the left arm out to the side and around to any degree. As you exhale, get a little twist to your left. Very confident, the gaze begins to follow, but there's no strain in your neck. Little by little, you take each step and you build your practice. You breathe. Extending both arms and lining with the ears, palms to press. As you exhale, release the right foot. So meet the left as best you can. Extend it really well. As you exhale, release the hand. Shoulders. Turning to face the long edge of your mat. Stepping into the Udita Hasa stance, the wide legged stance. Good distance between the feet, three and a half to four foot, heels and nine feet parallel. Sternum is back. Extend your arms out either side, shoulder high. Hunt your shoulders up to where you don't want them to be, then release your shoulders down. And draw your chin back down on a mild double chin. Often due to our phones and computers, our head is held out in front. Lightly back. Feel and breathe. Recognize and watch the beautiful reaction in the shoulders. No fight, just play. Exhale, if the arms are stood up, release them behind the back, clasp opposite wrist, form or elbow, whichever is appropriate and best for you. Keep the heels where they are, but turn the right toes in slightly, tip on the left heel, turn the left toes out to point towards the back edge of your mat, then draw the right hip around. Square the hip and square the shoulder towards the back of the mat. Then this is good here. Take an inhale. And your next exhale, begin to fold front. Now the intention as you fold front, is keeping your hips squaring as if you were upright or working towards that and sharing even weight in the feet. I know you're folding towards the left leg, but if you're feeling there's a lot of work on the left leg, come back up. Share more with the right. Engage a little further to the base of the thigh. Smile down. Exhale, bend the left knee. Knee over the ankle. If you know that your knee goes beyond the ankle with ease, perhaps you consider increasing the distance between the feet or reduce the bend of the knee. If comfortable, work towards an increased depth. Very comfortable here. Ribs a little back. Inhale, extend the arms and line with the ears. Palms suppress and a slight gaze towards the thumb. Recognize you're not dropping the head all the way back and looking to the thumb. Keep that length in the back of the neck. This is a slight gaze up. Slight tilt to the chin. Breathe. Exhale, release hands out to either side. For turning the arms behind as best you can. Inhale, straighten the left leg, take a bend over the knee. Feet back to parallel. Then turn the left toes in a little. When I'm starting, you must turn the right toes out towards the front edge of your mat. And draw the left hip around as best you can. Square the hip and square the shoulder. Take an inhale. As you exhale as best you can, folding front. 
thinking hip squaring, thinking shoulder squaring, and working towards almost even weight on both feet. Smoothly raising back up, still facing towards the front edging of your mat. As you exhale, bend the right knee. Thinking knee over the ankle is the intention. If it goes beyond with ease, perhaps consider increasing distance to the feet further more. Feels good. Inhale, raise the arm. There's a slight tilt of the head upwards, followed by the gaze. Working more, turning gaze up, focusing on the thumbs. Breathe really well. No force, no fight, just play. Pants the face front, next exhale, without the stirring much, keep that beautiful belly in the front leg, folding front over the right leg, hands on the side of the right foot, pivot on the left toes, the right back to meet the left, Adam Mukha Shonasana, the downward dog, the good distance between the hands and the feet, your gaze is straight downward, the top of your head is pointing directly in between your hands, really well. Spread the fingers, share that even weight. Next exhale, the resting warrior. Knees to the mat as wide as your mat, big toes to touch and sitting back in your heels. Push away the mat, keep the arms fully extended out in front of the forehead to the ground. If this is challenging, stack the hands or stack the fists to support the forehead. Little practice, maintain the arms extending. The know the navel is engaged, your breath is still fully conscious and lengthening. Next inhale, lift the head, the gaze is front. If the arms fully extended out in front, we'll go for a little flow between where you are. Keeping the hands in the position they're in, the knees and the feet. Any challenge in the shoulders, please come front high. If it's comfortable, work towards low. Moving real slow and steady. As you inhale, come front as low as you can. You'll notice that the elbows want to pop out either side. But can you hold the elbows toward each other? So point to the elbows and pointing straight back. Coming high as you need to to achieve this alignment. When your shoulders come over your wrists, exhale, straighten the arms. Release the head around the spine and pushing back to sit on the heel and forehead to mat for a brief moment. Inhale, low as you can as you come front. Make sure your hands are as wide as your shoulders. Exhale, pushing back, mindful of any tenderness held in the neck or the shoulder. Mindfully apply, inhale, coming front. Exhale, pushing back. Inhale, coming front. Exhale, pushing back. Inhale, front. Exhale, back. Next inhale, as you come front, straighten your lower legs, your toes are in line with your knee, elbows still pointing backward. Come front as low as you can and proceed beyond your belly. Once you've arrived, bring your feet together. Tops of the feet grounded, hands either side of the chest, chin grounded, shoulders lightly roll as you inhale, tuck the pelvis slightly, raise the chest, raise the head. Be here, breathe really well. Go within your comfortable limits. Any pressure on the neck, drop the chin. Very comfortable. Elevate the hands a little up off the mat.
exhale, round the palms to the right, round the chest, round the chin. Take the feet to be a little bit wider, as wide as the hips, if not wider. As you inhale, raise head, raise the chest, Bojangasana, here just a brief moment to go. Still good, keep the elbows close, use the little hand support to raise up a little further. Shoulders roll, neck is free. As you exhale, tuck the toes, bend the knee. Keep the good distance between the hands and the feet, Adam Mukhishwanasana, the downward dog. Sternum is drawn up. Point the crown of the head, points in between the hands. Beautiful. Next inhale. Soft, you bring your shoulders over your wrist. Straight line, heel to head. If you note that your hips are high when you bring your shoulders over your wrist, this is the suggestion that you're downward facing God. The hands and feet are too close. Increase the distance. Straight line. Note that you're not dropping the ribs down. Keep the sternum drawn up. You're not dropping the hips down. Straight line as best you can. Steady breath. Really focus on spreading the fingers, particularly the thumbs, and grounding the palms entirely. Share the width. Beautiful. Next exhale, grounding your right knee underneath the hip, but just a little wider. And the same in the left knee, left knee to the ground, underneath the hip, but then just a little wider. So your wrists, your knees, and your toes in a straight line. If you need to take rest, resting warrior, welcome to any moment. Feels good, you're up on all fours. Middle fingers are pointing front and your attention is coming into your shoulders and into your bicep. The intention is to internally and externally rotate through the shoulder joint, which we perceive as the bicep moving, but the hands maintain the same position. Allow the breath to flow steady and begin to internally and externally rotate through your shoulders. So this would be perceived as your elbows, the elbow points pointing towards the outer edge of your mat. And then pointing backwards as your elbow fits pointing front. Go real slow and steady, seeing if you can keep the palms fully engaged with the mat. If you can prevent any movement through the hands. Notice the bicep moving and can you work with straighter arms? Beautiful. Completing one more round. And once you bring your arms into an externally rotated position, so that will be the point your elbows pointing back and your elbow fits pointing front. Maintain it there. This is good. Draw your shoulder blade down your back. Shoulder blade draws down the back, creating space between the shoulder and the ear. And this is good attention to your ribs. Are your ribs dropping towards the ground? Hold the ribs up a little. Beautiful. Then this is good. You note the point of your hip to your knee. The hip and knee almost in a straight line. The knees are just a little wider. You want to maintain this alignment. Keeping the elbows po elbow points pointing back as you exhale, you're coming front into a little Vagana Swasa, Tiger Breathing Push Up. But note that you're not, your bum isn't going towards the heel as you inhale, pushing up. So try to avoid, avoid a swing back action. As you exhale smoothly, elbows point straight back. Coming into the point that you can come back with ease, you're not fighting. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, keep the ribs drawn back as you smoothly bend at the elbow, slight degree front. Inhale, coming back. Exhale, bend at the elbow. Inhale, coming back. No fight, keep the hands fully engaged with the mat. Exhale, sternum is drawn back, bending at the elbow. Inhale, coming back. Beautiful. Rest when needs be, no force of fight in your practice. Maintaining the same position, fingers are well spread. This is good here, you keep the sternum drawn up, the ribs are held up. Arms remain straight. As you exhale, your chest to drop down between your shoulder blades without bending your elbow to any degree. Inhale, pushing out. So it's just a movement that's perceived in the upper back. Exhale, drop your chest down between the shoulders, feel the reaction, shoulder blades work toward each other. Inhale, pushing up. Keep the head in a mild double chin. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Beautiful. 
This is good here, you're just playing with your practice. Cross the legs over behind, but don't fight the knees or the hips. Then sitting back, smoothly coming into a cross-legged position. Spine remains lifted as best you can. Shoulders are free, neck is free. Feel as good as you inhale or is there. Extend your arms in line with your ears, but you're paying particular attention to your ribs. As you bring your arms in line with your ears, often we use our ribs to assist in the final few moments to get them there. The final small distance. As best you can, keep your ribs back, even if your arms need to come further front. Be here on breath. Chin, mild double chin. Beautiful. Next exhale, release the hand. Right hand, right side and behind. The left hand hooks over the right thigh. If it's very comfortable, your right hand can reach around the start through the left hip or top of the thigh. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, just a gentle twist to your right. Feels good, the gaze falls. Spine is lifted. Ribs are back. Not rocking the head back. Keeping the head at mid-level. Breathe. Inhale, coming halfway back, so you're looking at your right knee, keeping the hands in the position you're in as best you can as you exhale, fall in the direction of the right knee, but keep the gaze beyond the knee if you can. Lifting the spine as you exhale to your left now. Left hand, left side and behind, right hand over the thigh. Little twist to your left. Next inhale, coming halfway back, look at your left knee, maintain hands in the same position if that's achievable and as you exhale, fall in the direction of the left knee, but keep the gaze beyond the knee. Can you keep the right side of the bum grounded? Inhale, smoothly back, raising all the way up, exhale through the centre, all is well here. Smoothly lower your knees, go wider apart, bring the feet together, but keep the knees rather high. Middle finger, next and thumb, grab the big toes, spine is lifting. I'll encourage you to be facing towards the one, whichever short edge of the mat is best for you, where there's no solid objects behind you. Playing around with your practice, lift your spine, focus on a point a little upward, you can play around with one foot raising at a time. Feels good, little practice raise both, it could be a quarter of a millimetre up off the mat, then you raise a little higher and they begin to depart each other a little bit off the side, spine is lifted, base of pelvic, below the navel becomes up. focus on the point. Challenge the back of the body, please come back with care if it feels good. Knees together, release the crest of the big toes, chin towards the chest as you inhale, just one or knock back. And release and rest for a few short moments in Shavasana, end of your practice. Releasing the body into a position of rest, in a position of effortlessness. Allowing the eyes to close and the mouth to close. Making all of the necessary adjustments to bring the body into a position of effortlessness and ease. Once you 
once the body has arrived, you can begin to release all the weight of the body. Any tension that may still linger, anything that's not serving you, that's occupying your mind, worry, anxiety, tension, all released into the earth. And with your body being held and being secure, just allow your attention to rest at your toes. And with the rhythm of your breath, allow it to move up through the body. And just notice along the way how your body feels. Starting at the toes, awareness moves at the breath. When you've arrived at the crown of the head, there's no rush in doing so. But upon the arrival of your awareness at the crown of the head, become aware of the whole body. How does the whole body feel? What's the response to your practice? Warmth, pulsing, vibration. From this deep restful position, softly allow your awareness to diffuse beyond the borders of your body. And as it does so, it begins to become more engaged and more aware. And with this engaged awareness, begin to stir your body through fingers, toes and the neck. Feet come together. Extending the right arm up overhead, the left hand to the belly and falling at the left knee. Roll to your side, your right side. And once you feel steady, push up to any seat of variation, eyes closed. Coming to the end of your practice, you take a moment to note any difference at the beginning of your practice. Gently begin to rub the palms. Lightly place hands over the eyes, gently come. And extend the massage throughout the face. Take your hands a small distance away from the eye. And gently blink the eyes open, gaze to the palms. Namaste. Thank you all so much. I hope you had a good practice. Hope the rest of your day goes well and look forward to connecting with you in your next practice, whether online or in person. Thank you.